I have two different species of plants here. This is uh, the weekend of June 1st, and uh, this um, video helps show the importance of knowing what plant it is you're looking for and how to di differentiate it from other plants, both edible and more importantly, the poisonous ones that can be confused with it. So, can you see anything about these two different species of plants that looks different? I'm gonna point out a few differences here. On the left here, we have wild onion. And at this stage of the development of the plant, it's more difficult to identify this because it doesn't have the flower stalk and the uh, flower bloom. So you're basically just going based off of the leaf structure and identifying it. So if you look at this leaf, you will notice um, if you run your fingers along the leaf, it feels like a succulent leaf. You will notice that there is a gentle U-shaped kind of valley in the leaf. And you also notice there is a just the slightest bluish tinge to it. You'll notice that the wild onion has kind of a pinkish color to the um, bulb. When you compare it to this plant, you'll notice some important differences. And if you don't know what you're looking at, it can be very easy to confuse these two plants. So this here is death camas. You'll notice how it looks very similar to the wild onion. These are both in the lily family, which explains why they look so similar to each other. Um, but certain species in the lily family are poisonous, while others are not only edible, but delicious. This one, definitely I would um, avoid and know how to identify in all stages of development. So you can look for certain hallmark characteristics at this stage of the death camas's development. You will notice that the leaf of the death camas is more grass-like in its um, feel and in its appearance. It's not as succulent as a wild onion. Uh, you'll also notice that where the leaf structure begins to branch, that there is a V-notch, a distinct, distinctive V-notch that runs the entire length of the leaf all the way to the top. If you remember, the wild onion is different because its leaf structure has more of a U-shaped kind of experience. Another thing to notice, wild onion, you can't really quite as easily fold over the two halves of the leaf very well compared to the death camas. The death camas just, because of that V-notch, is very easy to fold over and just run the entire length of the leaf. Another distinguishing characteristic is the scent. Wild onion will always have a wild onion smell and it will also have an onion taste. I feel entirely confident in consuming this. This species of onion is known as nodding onion, Allium cernuum, and I've noticed with this species that although there's a distinct onion taste and smell to it, it doesn't have as strong of an onion and smell and onion taste as some of the other wild onion species that grow in Colorado, but it is still a very noticeable onion taste and smell. It's a very delicious plant. You can enjoy it either raw or cooked. There's a variety of ways of cooking the wild onion. You can boil the bulbs and leaves. You can um, use them in a stew. You can roast them over the coals of a fire. Um, there's just plentiful ways of enjoying this. The entire wild onion is edible from the bulb to the leaves to the flower stalk, although that will be a little bit fibrous. And then also the flower bloom also is edible and has the characteristic onion flavor and smell.